Hello and welcome for today's crafty vlog. So I haven't finished my cardigan, my comfort fade cardi just yet. I'm so so close to finishing it. Um, but I thought that, that can be one of the things that I can work on today a little bit. Um, but there are a few things I want to be enjoying working on this afternoon. So first of all I need to cake some yarn up. I've got some yarn that I've dyed up specifically for a jumper for Jensen. This is going to be a DK flax for Jensen. I thought this gorgeous green would be perfect. This is everything I do, I do it for you and it's on my BFL DK base. I thought that would be perfect. It's quite nice and soft for a BFL um, but I thought that would be nice and durable so I thought I'd have a go at knitting with that. Um, so I've got to cake that up ready to use. So Adam's mum's going to be knitting that one. I've got a skein of Kiss Me. This is in a Merino Yak um, base. This one, actually Adam's mum's knitting something already in this and she's run out of yarn. So I've dyed up another skein. So I need to cake that ready up, cake that up ready for Liz. And I have some yarn for my next project. <laughs> I thought that I would knit a love note in this lovely bright pink. I've literally just called this colour pink and I thought that would be a nice sort of statement piece with the lacy around the neck. So I'm going to cake that up ready to use because I'm not going to be very far off finishing my Comfort Vade Cardi. I thought I'd start caking up some of these minis from the Giddy Yarns advent I had last year. Um, to get going on my crochet hexagon blanket I will um, start doing the crochet for that as well on this video so hopefully I'll get a few hexagons done to show you how I've got started I've got my swift here I've got my ball winder so I'm going to get caking So one caked, a few more to go. Now on my last skein of the pink, and then I'll be on to the minis. So I've caked up four skeins of my colourway pink for my love note. Those two are on a Siri alpaca lace and these two are on a merino nylon fingering weight. I'm going to hold them double. Pink is named after the Aerosmith song so that's why it's called just pink rather than just rather than sounding like a song. It is actually a song. I've got three skeins caked up for the flax DK weight um, for Jensen, so a little two-year-old, two to four, I think I'm going to knit. Um, and that's in the Everything I Do or Do It For You colourway, green, because of course it's a very sort of foresty film, so <laughs> um, the song that went with the film has to be green. And I've then caked up the skein of of Kiss Me um, to finish off the project that Liz is knitting. So that's all caked up. I've just got a few of the minis I want to cake up ready for the actual blanket that I'm going to start. So I'm going to just do four I think for now and make a start on the hexagon blanket and then I've got a little bit of sewing that I want to start. Um, I wanted to start earlier this morning in my little crafty day but unfortunately I had to do flipping VAT stuff so boring. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'll get a few bits and bobs done this afternoon but I'm going to get this done quickly so I can get that crochet hook started on that hexagon blanket. You helping me Jensen? Yeah? You going to share your bar with me? Your OT bar. Yeah. There's not much left though. <laughs> no, you have it. Mm. 
So I keep calling this blanket the hexagon blanket, but it is actually called the Weekender Blanket by Sandra Paul. I've now downloaded the instructions. I've completed one hexagon. What I decided to do is actually, the pattern talks about using DK yarn and I've got fingering weight yarn out of an advent from Giddy Yarns. But what I thought I'd do to make it sort of a bit thicker and go a bit quicker, I'd actually hold the yarn double so that it's like a DK weight. So that is my first hexagon holding the yarn double and I think that's come out quite nicely. So you can see that I've started on the second one. Um, I've used these two colours. I can't actually remember what they were called. Helen did name them in her advent but I didn't um, I didn't make a note of which one was which I'm afraid which is terrible of me but they're all really lovely so I'm hoping to get a few of these joined together so you can see what it looks like but I'm loving the way this looks like so far obviously because I'm holding the yarn double it is sort of marling the colours together a bit more and because I already have a Battenberg blanket sort of on the go I thought it might be nicer to do one that's a little bit thicker so for DK weight yarn she suggests using a four millimeter crochet hook and I think I use a 3.5 for the Battenberg blanket so I think this will be nice a little bit thicker so let's see how much I can do before I go on to the next project so Sandra's blanket pattern is a free pattern if you just want the hexagon shapes um, but you can pay £2.50 to get the layout as well and deta more detailed instructions so, so that's what I've done so that I can see how she's done the border and everything and how many hexagons she's done but at the moment I'm not planning out where my hexagons are going to be properly just yet I'm just going to do a few and see how it comes out so I have two joined hexagons I'm quite pleased with how that's come out I've used the technique that Sandra put in the pattern where you join as you go and you just join in the corners of the hexagons um, and that seems to be working up quite nicely let's get a couple more done I'm really pleased with how that's coming out actually. I thought that the the join wouldn't feel that stable even though they're attached just at the corners. But I think it is. I, I forget that crochet is a lot more stable than knitting is. I'm just sewing in my ends as I go so I don't get have to do those at the end. <laughs> so what I like to do is thread the yarn through the circle bit that I did the... Um, the crochet chain start and then you can actually cinch it in a little bit more as well um, to make it a bit more solid I go around a couple of times not sure if that's the proper way to do it but that's what I tend to do there we go and then I'll just sew the end for the outside bit but it is nice that you can crochet them together as you go um, not even doing another round, so that's cool. I just tend to thread the yarn wherever I can with crochet. Do you have a special technique um, for crochet sewing in the ends? There we go, I'm going to snip the ends off. And there we go, there's three done. So the day's gone a lot quicker today than I thought. It's already getting dark. Um, and I've only managed to do my three hexagons so far. So I am going to video this evening's crafting and then upload it as a video tomorrow so that you've got a little bit more content. Um, because I haven't got around to sewing my ends in on my cardigan yet and I wanted to do that and doing some hand sewing as well. So let's get on to the next thing. It looks like each of these hexagons takes about three 
three and a half grams um, per hexagon if you're holding the yarn double um, in a merino and nylon fingering weight yarn. Um, so I think I'll be able to get three hexagons out of each of these 10 gram minis roughly. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I'll be hopefully, hopefully get a, a reasonable sized lap blanket when I've got 24 minis. I shall have to look at the layout and work out how big it's going to be. But it is nice that I can do the joining as I go. I really like the border that Sandra's got on her pattern so I'm hoping to get that done. I could maybe do that in the yarn that I had for Christmas Day um, to bring all the colours together and make the border a little bit bigger actually if um, to use more of this yarn up. But that's really gorgeous. So this one was called Charlie's Chocolate Factory because the, the theme of the advent last year was Charlie's Chocolate Factory. Jensen, do you want anything else to eat? No? You gone all quiet? You gone all quiet? You can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Diggle, 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 diggle. <laughs> So, I've packed some orders, posted them, had dinner, um, and Adam is now putting Jensen to bed so I can get a bit of stitchy time in. We don't, I don't actually normally do properly craft um, in an afternoon, it's just that I've sort of made time to do it so that I could record a video. Um, but I do normally do some crafting in the evenings, but I don't normally do a lot of sewing in the evenings, I tend to do knitting. Um, so this piece that I've been working on was a sort of lonely block that was left over in a lady's stash when she'd passed away, my friend Anne. Now the front of the block looked like this but with some corner pieces which I folded over to the back and then because of the way it's been folded already there's some edges that you can pull in um, to the centre of these squares so I've put little scraps of fabric in the centre of these so that they've got like a different fabric in each one and you can see Anne had done the same fabric on each of these four and then folded the fabric over and then stitched them down so it's like a 3D effect. Um, I've already stitched this one down around all the sides. I thought I'd go for pinks this side but I've still got to do the other three. I have started um, on this one though. So I'll show you how I sew some of that and hopefully I'll be able to sew this up quite quickly actually because I've done most of the other sewing. I just need to fold the edges in to make each of these squares look like this one. So I've used some Liberty fabrics in those because I thought they went quite nicely with the pinks and I'll probably use it this side so it goes nice with my sort of pink theme um, and it goes well with my little sewing case as well. If you're interested I ha do have a tutorial on how I do this and I'll leave a link in the description bar down below. It's like a, a four um, hexagon sewing case which has got all different um, sort of pockets and things on each of the different sides. Um, and also some scissors fit in there but I've got them um, to use at the moment. On the case there's some little embroidery as well and in the little tutorial I show you how I've done that. Anyway, I'm going to get on with some of this sewing. So that's the first corner I did and now I've just done the second one. Two more to go. You can see where I, I'm just going to pull these across over the fabrics on each of the squares there.
Right, the pin cushion is finished. You can see the four cathedral windows and I can pop some pins in there now. It's rather a large pin cushion but I've got a lot of pins <laughs> and that'll just be nice in my craft room. And I can use it the other side as well if I want a little pop of colour. So instead of sewing my ends in, I think I'm going to go for it and see if I can finish the neckband on my cardigan. Fingers crossed. It's about half past eight, is it? It's gone half past eight. See if we can do it in a couple of hours. So this is the neckband. This is at the back of the neck, so it's really quite thick there. And you can see that the colours are fading. Um, so one, two, three, and I'm just going to start on the fourth colour with the short rows. Um, so I've just got the short row section in the fourth colour and a couple of rows, well, like four rows to do um, all the way around and then the cast off. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Wish me luck. I'm casting off. The last stitch. Are you ready? It's Jenny's, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, so I'm just putting the last two stitches on. I've got to get my scissors out. Huh? Where is he? Oh no, where are my scissors? Got him. This is so exciting. It is. Can you feel the tension? <gasps> Last stitch. We have finished that neckband. Wow. Can I try it on? What's that way? This needs a good block in though. And obviously I need to sew the ends in. But there we go. I feel the squishiness of the neckband. Oh, it does feel nice. I think that is gonna be nice. What does it look like in the mirror? Oh yes, I think this is gonna be something that I wear a lot. And it's not even blocked yet. What do you think? Lovely. By the time this video goes up, it'll be Friday and I'll be putting up the February Yarn Clubs. And also this weekend is the last weekend to pre-order the sort of Valentine's bag and yarns that are inspired by the Especially For You song. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in next week's video. Bye!